Yeah, we just found this woman. Um, she's 23 years old. So we found her walking up Clayton Road, like flagging us down for help. She's bleeding from a, she had like a black eye, she's bleeding from her lip, and um, she was in trouble. So we're just trying to figure out what's going on. It sounds like she was beat up by her boyfriend. She jumped out of the car. The boyfriend just sped off with the baby in the car. And we're just trying to help her out, and the paramedics are on their way. So, and I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> so, honestly, I'm like, holy cow. And, um, and, and they're like, who are you? And I'm like, well, I'm, I'm Joe. I'm a, I'm a seminarian. I'm trained to be a priest. I was <laughs> like, oh, we thought you were the boyfriend coming back. <laughs> oh, come on. I know it's look like seminarian, but I promise uh, it's me. And she's like, would you pray with us? And so I, I prayed with this family that was helping this woman. And as I'm holding their hands, I mean, her hand is just shaking. I mean, it is, she is really shaken up. She is her twin sister, her mom, and then uh, a fiance. And they said, after we prayed, um, they said, you know, we're, we, we're falling away Catholics. We haven't been to church in years, but, you know, something about tonight was, uh, it, it's so crazy that you're here. I, I can't believe you just showed up on the scene. So the paramedics came, and Ellsville Police did a great job, and they um, they took care of the woman. They I think identified the boyfriend and went after him. And justice was served, as far as I could tell, this event. Right. The the reason I did that is because earlier that night I got news that somebody really important to me, um, Cardinal Raymond Burke, had been just taken to the hospital on a ventilator, and that was happening up in Wisconsin. And I remember I pulled out his, his book that, that he signed a big mentor and friend of mine. And um, it said, I opened the chapter, it was like, pray the rosary every day, no matter what state you're state in life. So I was like, well, that's a sign I'm getting out of here. So I, when I was walking around the perimeter, it was because I was just going out to pray the rosary, right? And probably the moment I started praying the rosary was the moment that that girl was probably out able to escape. I mean, just, um, it wasn't me, it was the power of God, right? The rosary's that powerful. So, um, that has been on my mind. And when Shane asked me to do a talk on the rosary, I was like, well, I gotta tell the story. Because, um, yeah, it was just, it's just still, and the graces are still coming, right, when I pray with that. So, this, this rosary, right, we all are familiar with it. Uh, the brief description is that it's a mass in the divine office. So powerful, you could argue, is the rosary, right? So it is actually based off of the liturgy, which, um, the, so monks and priests, they'll pray the 150 stages when the rosary was founded. The way it started was, you know, the average person couldn't read Latin and chant the Psalms. So instead of 150 Psalms, the Psalter of David, they provided the Psalter of Mary. So it was 150 Hail Marys. And as you pray those Hail Marys, you, the words would kind of be like, fade into the background, and you would sort of be like a harmony. And your mind would then dwell on the mysteries of the life of Christ. So the whole idea of the rosary is to give you a method to enter into the life of Christ, to, to walk his footsteps and to see his life through the eyes of Mary. Um, and it's amazing. It's incredibly powerful. And I'm so grateful Shane asked me to do this talk because it's I was I knew the rosary was great, and now I'm like completely sold. <laughs> yeah, absolutely sold. So after tonight, you guys are uh, a little bit more excited to pray the rosary. That will be mission accomplished for me. That's that's my goal. Um, it's happened for me in these months that are here. I really think the Lord is calling St. Clair's Parish to grow in devotion to the rosary. I just I don't think it's an accident that um, that everything like this has gone down. So um, there's this monk in the Middle Ages named St. Dominic, right? And he is seeing a terrible uh, set of events happen. Number, basically, there's this, this heresy from the East that is entering into the ordinary lives of Catholics in France and Italy, and it's causing them to abandon the faith, right? To have mixed up ideas about human nature, about man and woman, sort of kind of like today in, in many ways. And, uh, he, and he sees that the diocesan priests are no match for these heretical priests that are well living uh, in a way that's more compelling than the diocesan priests, because there's a lot of luxury that had crept into the ranks of the clergy, and that, was, that would turn people off. So he just starts this religious order called the Order of Preachers. They're super smart and have a radical poverty. And they go into France and Italy, and 
and they uh, have trouble at first. And the way they basically they, they get killed, a lot of them do. So this is St. Peter Martyr, and one of the companions getting martyred. It's kind of a bloody picture. Um, and there needs to be a solution. And he, in praying, he prays to the Blessed Virgin Mary, and she gives him the rosary. And what this does is it gives people a tangible thing to hold on to that then allows them to pray with the mysteries of Christ's life, right? So this, this the, the heresy that was spreading at that time was called Albigensianism, which is a, a, a basically Catholic elitism, right? Because the world into, first of all, the elite who knew, knew everything, had the secret knowledge, and then everyone else. And then they would also divide creation into good, Basically, anything material was evil, and anything that was spiritual was good, right? So it's very simplistic, but it really hurt a lot of people. It really misguided a lot of people. So when St. Dominic gets this rosary from the Blessed Virgin Mary and says, you need to give them this tangible, material thing that reminds them that the world is created by God, it's good, and it's to lead them to contemplate the incarnation, right? Which is the absolute proof that Jesus loves creation. He entered it. He became man to God's flesh. And it's gangbusters. The rosary just totally uh, supplants this heresy, and it's an amazing success. And there's a joke that um, Father McTony says, he's a Jesuit down at SLU, he's sort of making fun of the Jesuits as he says it, but he's like, the Dominicans were founded to combat the Albigensians, and all the Albigensians are gone. And the rosary got them all. And the Jesuits were founded to combat the Protestants. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Father McCoy says it, and you don't feel like you can uh, laugh, right? Because uh, he's an amazing Jesuit priest himself. So another another uh, miracle in history that's actually incredible. So right now, um, we we I think like the 1500s. Basically, there was the, the Ottoman Empire was taking over all of Western Europe, Asia, the ruins of the Roman Empire, really, and it was this reign of terror. And imagine if the Taliban that's taking over Afghanistan, we see all the terrible atrocities that are happening in Afghanistan. Imagine if that was all of Europe, most of Asia, uh, all of Africa, and, and also we, we could see that Canada and South America were falling, China doesn't care, Japan doesn't care, Australia is too far away, and basically uh, we're, we're about to get uh, conquered by this Islamic Empire that is, that is taking over. That is what was happening in 1571, 100%. The Sultan of the Ottoman Turks said, he bragged that he, is going to, that he was going to stable his horses in, in St. Peter's Basilica. He's like, I'm gonna stable my horses in St. Peter's Basilica, and I'm gonna wrap the Pope's head in a turban. He's like, and I'm gonna rub it in their face that, that we are conquering. The problem is, is he underestimated uh, who the Pope was at that time. Uh, Europe was weak, right? After the Protestant Reformation, the nations were splintered, there was hardly any alliances, it was the perfect time for the Muslims to attack. But the Pope at that time, usually in, in times of great crisis, God raises up a saint to be Pope. And that's exactly what he did in those days. It was St. Pius V. And Pope St. Pius V called for a coalition, a military coalition, he handpicked the commander-in-chief, and uh, basically insisted that every soldier in the Holy Alliance in fighting for the Christians would go to confession, would carry the rosary, would pledge their life to the Blessed Mother, and then the Pope called on all of the Western world, all of Christendom, to pray the rosary, and basically saying how dire the situation was. And even Lutherans who had fallen away started to take out their old rosary beads that they had thrown away before and went to Catholic priests to get them blessed. So there's a, there's a, there's a, a longer story that's even more amazingly detailed, and you can hear it um, through Monsignor Michael Witt, who's a historian here in the Archdiocese, an amazing guy who's on Catholic radio a lot. Um, but it's a smashing victory, right? So the, um, the Holy Alliance goes out against the Muslims. And the wind changes in favor of the Christian fleet. And it's a rout. It is a total victory against all odds. They were outnumbered. They didn't know the geography. And they did not have the skills, the naval skills, that the Turks had, not by a long shot. And yet, it was this smashing victory. It's recorded that back in Rome, the 
This was on October 7th, 1571. Back in Rome at 4 p.m., Pope Pius V was sitting at a meeting with his papal treasurer, and suddenly, in the middle of the meeting, he just stopped and he said to all of his attendee, attendants, he said, please leave, because this is no time for business. This is a time for giving thanks to God, for he has delivered us from the hands of the Mohammedans. And a day later, the messenger arrived with the news of total victory. And the world would look like a very different place today if that victory had not been won, right? Um, the, the West has just been at war with radical Islam since its founding, right? And that was a key moment. And God decided to spare uh, the West. And it was through the prayers of the Rosary. And the person who's responsible for the victory, for calling together the alliance, for picking the, for picking the commander in chief, and for making everything happen against all odds, is the Pope. Pope St. Pius V, and he says, this was not our victory, this was the victory of the Mother of God. So that, that hits me hard. This is him at his window uh, giving thanks. Uh, they used to dress a little like Santa back then. <laughs> <laughs> there was nothing jolly about this guy. Uh, he was a Dominican as well. He was a son of St. Dominic. He was the first Dominican Pope, I believe. So that story is, um, I think it's, it gets lost. Uh, it's important to me because my brother, um, like naval, naval battles are important to me because my brother is a naval officer on board uh, the USS Hampton, right? Which is a um, uh, fast attack submarine. And he's on his way back right now, he's safe from the South China Sea. But if you walk into my house in the foyer, you're gonna see a statue of Our Lady Guadalupe, and underneath of it, you're gonna see a wooden model of a submarine <laughs> that my mom put there the day he got his assignment, right? Uh, and it's worked. I mean, he's been safe, and we just got news that the USS Connecticut, like right, a few weeks ago, had that crash, and my, that, my brother was in Guam when that submarine, those damage, came in with all the wounded soldiers, uh, wounded sailors, and he, he said, yeah, Joe, I was looking across the bay at the Connecticut, and the whole front of the ship was gone. Right? And there's, there's, you know, all these wounded sailors because of that. And, um, and probably a million other close calls that he's not allowed to tell us or else he'd have to kill us. You know? <laughs> uh, so it's powerful. The rosary works. And the reason, um, the reason that, that submarine is under Our Lady's protection is, uh, is obvious. But then my mom also, if you go to the St. Anselm Adoration Chapel every Tuesday at 1 p.m., she and a couple of their moms from St. Anselm's are there praying the rosary for the military every week without fail. And any, any of us who are at home with them are there too, right? Because at this point, we know it, it's not us. It's got to be the Blessed Mother watching out for us. So, um, so that's, a, that's just a, uh, one personal thing. Another, another personal thing, I think, is um, here's a picture of Pope John Paul II praying the rosary. Uh, is I think it's really important for dads to pray the rosary, for men, fathers, grandfathers uh, to pray the rosary. Uh, the reason this is, is first of all, when my dad, when, when he would come home from the hospital and he'd be in, uh, we would stumble upon him in, the, in church and he'd be in his scrubs and he'd be praying the rosary on his knees and uh, we'd kind of surprise him sometimes. And was, for me, that is one of the most vivid images of my dad that I have. It's so powerful. Uh, even to this day, I just remember the love and the concern and um, the significance of, of like a father who's got, you know, he had all seven of us, and he, he didn't do it alone, right? He, he, he knew he couldn't be the dad that he wanted to be on his own, and it was very clear. Like when, when, you're, when your dad's on his knees praying to God, that hits you as a little kid, right? And it and still hits me. And actually, John Paul II says that in his encyclical on the rosary. He says, it may seem like you know, some of these miracles from the past, the Battle of Lepanto, where we beat the Turks, or even the Albigensian heresy, like it may seem like those things don't affect us anymore. But he said, parents today are so, uh, feel so overmatched sometimes by what's coming after their kids. Right? He, he said, the generational gap seems to be so wide and so and gripping and ever wider as technology is changing and we have, and, there, and our kids seem to have lived these lives that we have no idea um, what's going on because there's these worlds that come in through technology and meanwhile there's, there's messaging that's just changing extremely fast as well 
technology and culture are moving under our feet. And he says, um, he says parents feel overmatched, they're anxious, they're concerned for their kids, and rightfully so. And he says the rosary is a beautiful way to entrust your kids to the Blessed Virgin Mary and not to try to take it on all on yourself. And he said, um, if, he said if you can gather your family as a, together and pray the rosary, it'll help the family keep track of each other's lives. Because the whole point of the rosary is to keep track of Jesus and Mary's lives. And if you do that together as a family, you naturally start to track with each other. So it has this beautiful way of bringing uh, your life together as you unite around the life of Jesus and Mary. That, that's, that's really the power of the rosary that sometimes gets missed, I think. Um, so that was something that, that hit me uh, when I read that, because, yeah, as a kid, seeing my dad, number one, uh, seeing my mom pray for my brother, those are, um, those still stay with me. Yeah, the Pope John Paul II as well. So Pope John Paul II was the spiritual father of uh, Cardinal Dolan, right? Cardinal Dolan, the St. Louis native, and what, if you, Cardinal Dolan, one of his first jobs over in Rome was in, in charge of the seminary over there. And his, um, one of the, the, the sites that you would see him uh, in Rome is him strolling through the gardens of the seminary or strolling the streets of Rome praying the rosary. And he would just, he would shout out, hey, how are you doing? this like Cardinal Dolan way, and he could just rely on him 100%. Well, his spiritual son, one of those seminarians that was there in the 90s with him, is Father James Mason. And Father James Mason is the rector of Kenrick Glennon Seminary here in St. Louis. And one of the most powerful images that you'll see at Kenrick Glennon Seminary is the rector, the president rector, every day in the afternoon, walking with his yellow lab Gemma, praying the rosary. And he's just like walking around the seminary like he's Jericho, right? And um, Gemma's his faithful companion. And when I started at the seminary, I kind of had a chip on my shoulder. It was really powerful to see Father Mason uh, just humbly walking around and giving 17, 17, 18, 19 minutes of his day every day to the Lord, right? Um, I saw that, I was like, Father Mason is a former prosecutor. He was a very, had a very successful career before he came to the seminary. He's done an amazing job as a priest. He's incredibly holy. He's, up every, he's the first person in the chapel every single morning. He sits behind the men in the, in, the, in the far back pew, and he sees the backs of all their heads, and he talks about how he prays for each of them individually. And I imagine, too, on his rosary walk, he's the guy responsible for going in front of the bishop and saying, this guy is ready to be ordained a priest of the Catholic Church, right? That's Father Mason's job, and he's got us. And it may, it may very well turn out that it could be the wrong decision, and at a certain point, Father Mason can do as much as he can to try to make sure that this, this guy is called and discern with the man that he's called to the priesthood that he trusts, right? So there's the, the parents, and they have to do that at some point in their kids' lives, right? Hopefully every day, but eventually at some point, there's going to be a moment where, um, where the kids work with the kids leave, right? And then it's the same thing for uh, a spiritual father like Father Mason. In his case, he's at the seminary, right? And the rosary is what I think gives him trust and gives him hope and um, makes it possible. Uh, okay, I also want to talk really briefly about, um, so I thought about this thing, just talking about the, the benefits of walking, right? And then I just kind of slide in the rosary as a, as a way to, um, like, oh, just, you know, you're going to get to walking, might as well pray the rosary, right? Like, I want to watch. But it's, it really is powerful to go around and, and walk and pray the rosary with your family, with your friends. Um, I, uh, one of the things that the rosary does is, so I did this one day, I was like writing this talk, I was like, okay, I'm going to tell people to go out and walk around and pray the rosary, i got to do it. So I got out of my seat, it was like 3 in the afternoon, it was really hot, I was like, maybe I shouldn't go. Okay, that means I probably definitely should go. So I'm in my, <laughs> I'm in my clerics, I'm walking up Clayton Road, and it feels like every car, every single car is just staring at me and glaring at me. I, it's all in my head, right? And um, like, this is so weird. I am all of a sudden extremely self-conscious. I walk around in clerics every day. Now it feels like these things are burning my skin. 
you know, uh, this, this is so strange. I'm like, what do I, I got to think about something to get out of my head because this is not healthy. This is not mentally so self-aware. And then it hit me like, the church gives us something to think about when we're praying a rosary. It gives us these mysteries, right? Joyful, glorious, sorrowful, luminous. Uh, just be, be taken over by the Lord, by the Holy Spirit, and drawn into these to these mysteries, right? I mean, when I say mystery, what I'm saying is it's an event that happened in the life of Jesus, right? So when we do when we do events, and when we talk, when we say things, it's like a, it's like a camera flash, right? I'll, I'll say a word and it's gone, right? It's, when our Lord was walking the earth, when he spoke, it was not just the words of a man, right? It was the words of Almighty God that came through the instrument of, his, of Christ's humanity. So there's more than just human actions, human words. So, so when I say something, it's like a little flash of a photograph and the memory fades away. When Jesus speaks, it's like, it's like the light of the sun. It's always there as the generations will come and go. And his words and his life has eternal significance. It's a fountain that's constantly pouring forth grace for us to enter into. So that's why the rosary works you will. It's because uh, God's actions are not ordinary. They're not um, something that just comes and goes and passes away like a, another historical figure. When Jesus did things, when things happened in his life, they happened for eternity. That's why at every Mass we can renew the sacrifice of the cross, right? That's why the rosary works. And it's so powerful, I think, to, and so healthy for your mind to, 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 for the imagination to be drawn to um, something beautiful and something um, so meaningful and worthwhile, right? Um, so I have an analogy. Um, I think there's some discussion questions, and then we'll we'll close with a back to the rosary. But the analogy is: um, Have you guys heard of the? Um, I've heard of it. So you remember the old Kodak, uh, the slide projector, right? It was a slide projector that what just took over. Um, American households, right? It became a standard item in the American household, and it was um, it was the way you would you would go back and connect with your past. So there's this TV show called Mad Men, right? About advertising executives. It's kind of a raunchy TV show. I wouldn't recommend it to everyone. Um, but they do have this scene where the advertising executives are are trying to tell the people at Kodak how to sell the carousel. This is how you're gonna sell this device. It's really interesting. I, I'm just curious to see if you guys see the same thing uh, that I saw. So hopefully the sound is loud enough. And we'll listen. This is Joe Heron, Lynn Taylor. No issues with that, fortunately, they're all back in the lab. It's a wonderful facility, but they don't take vacation. What do they show? Slides been working? <laughs> So, have you figured out a way to work the wheel into it? We do. We are. 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 We copyright, Greek, and Teddy. And Teddy told me the most important idea in advertising is new. Creates an inch. You simply put your product in there as a kind of calamine motion. We also talked about a deeper bond with the product. Nostalgia.
backwards, forwards. that you've got this, this device that cycles through memories and it allows you to travel back in time. And he said, round and, it allows you to travel like a child travels, round and around and back home again to a place where you know you are loved. That is precisely an analogy for the rosary. Now for the, for the carousel, like I, when I go back and look at my Apple photos, it's, it is painful because I can't go back to those places and, and you know, Google Photos and Apple Photos will, will create a slideshow for you and you're transported, right? But there is that pain because you can't go back. With the rosary, we can go back. We can 100% go back, and it is a place where we're loved. And it's so healing for us to, 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 to walk a, um, a route like that. And so for the rosary to be uh, a going out and then a returning home, um, I just, I found that image to be, uh, or that video to be, it's really striking. So the good news is that um, that is the place where we're loved. And those reflecting on the mysteries of Christ's life, we do that and it redeems our own life, right? So, uh, so Shana, I think now would be a good time just to take a quick break.